I wanted to hear of that. Uh, a lot of what I heard this morning, I heard for the first time. Uh, we haven't had a lot of time to chat about her trip, and so praise the Lord. I know that you'll be in prayer for people in Turkey and around the world. Uh, everyone needs Jesus Christ. Contrary to popular belief, we have, we have, uh, I, it has been reported to me, now I have not confirmed this, but it has been reported to me that uh, there have been statements made by the Pope that uh, uh, Jesus and Muhammad are basically the same, that the Quran and the Bible are on the same level, that uh, God and Allah are the same. Uh, I have to tell you something. That's false. Absolutely false. This is the Word of God and the only Word of God. And there is no other. For this is based on the Word of God who is Jesus Christ himself. I want to talk to you for just a few moments this morning about chastisement, one of your favorite subjects. Chastisement. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Now, uh, how many of you really like to talk about punishment? How many of you really like to talk about discipline? Just raise your hand. That's one of my favorite subjects, Brother Gary. Not really. Okay. Well, in the, in the book of Hebrews, in the 11th chapter, we have what we call the faith chapter. It's, it's kind of the hall of fame for men and women who walked in faith in the Bible. And uh, following that faith chapter, the Bible talks to us immediately, almost immediately, within two verses, it begins to talk to us about the chastisement of God. Now, I want you to know something, that God looks on chastisement as something that is good. God looks on chastisement as something that is positive. In fact, God looks on chastisement as something that assures you that you are his child. My six children could be assured that they were my children because of the rods that we kept around the house in strategic places that God applied to the seat of learning at uh, the correct times so that they could learn the lessons that were of the house. Amen. How many of you don't have rods in your house? Well, there should be a whole bunch of people that, uh, that raise their hand. I said, don't have rods. All right. You know, uh, Lowe's was our favorite store in, uh, in those days or, or, or wherever you wanted to go. My children would go into these stores and they would look at those, you know, they have those racks of dowels. Some of them are great big like that and some of them are little bitty like, you know, just, and we would usually get one that was about as big as your little, little finger like that. Makes a great little whipping rod. They're about that long. I've had it used on me by my wife <laughs> in one occasion when I was trying to teach my children about chastisement, okay? Yeah, she didn't do it uh, just out of anger or anything like that, okay? I want, she wants me to clarify that for you right quick. Why do we do that? Because we wanted our children to grow up understanding right from wrong. We wanted our children to understand the ways of the Lord. The Bible does say that if we love our children, that we punish them, we chasten them betimes, the King James Version says. Uh, often, often. We are living in a generation that does not know chastisement. We are living in a society that has become absolutely permissive that says my children will grow up without discipline and yet they will grow up to be disciplined individuals and that is a lie. That is a lie. If we do not learn discipline at home uh, and if we do not learn to honor God at home, chances are uh, that lesson will be lost to us. Now, when we look at this 12th chapter of Hebrews, I need to start uh, looking at this just a minute. Before we get into the chapter, let me just look at you for just a moment. Let me share with you this word chastisement that's going to be used often in this, 
in this uh, chapter it's going to be used as chastisement it's going to be used as chastening uh it it uh it means the root word actually is the same word that we use to train up a child in the way he should go exact same word all right it, it means to instruct it means to educate it means disciplinary correction Okay, in the in the case of of Hebrews, the twelfth chapter, it that is the specific the specific uh, definition, and it also carries with it the uh, the connotation of instruction and nurturing, nurturing. So when God talks about chastisement, He's not talking about His wrath. He's talking about instruction. He's talking about correction. He's talking about uh, the, the uh, direction that he wants our lives to go so he teaches us. Amen. He trains us. So in, in, this, in this 12th chapter of Hebrews, uh, in the second verse, it tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Now, folks, I want you to know something. The joy of the cross for Jesus was your salvation. It wasn't the joy of the scourging. It wasn't the joy of the buffeting. It wasn't the joy of having his beard pulled out. It wasn't the joy of being nailed to a cross or having a spear driven through his side. That was not the joy. The joy of the cross for Jesus was you and me. That we could experience his forgiveness and abundant life that only he could bring. Praise God for that. For the joy, uh, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, Jesus, that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Okay, God's talking to us like we were children. He says, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Every single one. He said, if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Well, the Proverbs tells us who the son is that the father chasteneth not. Proverbs tells us that if you hate your son, you won't, you won't discipline him. If you hate your son or daughter, you will not correct them. That's what it says. So what son, he says, is, is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof? All are partakers. Then are ye bastards and not sons. You don't belong to the Lord if you don't have chastisement in your life. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure but he look at this phrase but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness righteousness unto them which are exercised by it now the i, I want to just stop there for a minute because i may forget later on the 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 one who is exercised by it 
is the one who allows it to be profitable to them in their life. The one who takes heed to the chastening of the Lord. The one who responds positively to what God is trying to tell them or teach them or instruct them or correct them. You guys all right over there? Okay, good, good. All right. In verse 12, it says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man can see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. There's more here, but we're going to stop right there. I want to talk to you for just a moment about the correction of the Lord. One of the things that we need to understand is that every child of God receives correction. Why is that? Because God wants to teach us his ways. When, when the, it, it started way back in the Garden of Eden, when God said, look, here you are. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. And I've given you this wonderful place to live. And you can eat of all the fruit of all the trees, including the tree of life. But you just can't eat of the tree of the knowledge of of good and evil. Discipline always has restrictions. Are the restrictions bad? No, they're for our good. Now sometimes we think that when we have restrictions, it's just so that our parents can lord it over us. You know, I, I, you know we could say to our children, look, it doesn't matter. You want to play in the street? You want to play in the yard? It doesn't matter. Just play where you want to play. That isn't what my parents told me. They said, you stay out of that street. And when I got in the street, my mother came out, cut a switch off of the bush next to the garage, and came out and whacked my little bare legs until I got back in the yard. And she told me, if you get out in that street again, I'm going to do it twice as bad. Now, she didn't do that because she hated me or because she wanted to put a restriction on me. She did it because she loved me and she knew what was best for me. And she knew what was safe. Now, I didn't even understand the concept of safe. And some of us don't either. And just like Eve, we get into the position of our lives where we think that God's holding out on us. We think that God has lied to us. We think that if we can do what we want to do instead of what God wants to do, our life is going to be fuller and richer and better and more fulfilling. And guess what? It's the lie that Satan told in the beginning, and it's still the lie that he tells today. You see, the Bible says here that God, he says, in verse 10, for they verily, talking about our earthly fathers, for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit. Uh, I didn't, uh, I, we, we did spank our children. We did use the rod on our children until they were about somewhere between 10 and 12 years old. And then we began to speak. I mean, we spoke before, but I mean, we began to reason and choices had to be made and uh, other kinds of punishments were used you know if you know if, if if you say what's the number one punishment for children today a young people take away their cell phone I wouldn't even have you know I could take a poll in here and everyone would get that right because you know worse than a whack on the behind I can't text I'm going to go into withdrawals. <laughs> huh? You understand what I'm talking about? Now, he did it for our profit. What kind of profit does the Bible here talk about? The, the profit that it talks about in, in that verse, in that same verse, he says, but for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, I want you to know something here. Uh, 
You can't be a partaker of the holiness of God unless you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. That is something that's reserved for the children of God. And you won't have the chastisement of God unless you are a child of God. Now, sometimes God uses a type of chastisement to narrow the way, to eliminate the possibilities, and to bring a person to the place where they can look up and, and say yes to the Lordship of Jesus Christ uh, before they're saved, when they come to that salvation. But here we're talking about children, God's children, that receive chastening of the Lord so that they can be partakers of his holiness. Okay? There's a second thing here. It says in verse 11, he says, Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now I want you to know, God says there is a peaceable fruit of righteousness that comes as a result of receiving the correction of the Lord correctly. Amen? Now, in, in peaceable fruit of righteousness means that's going to be a peaceful life. There's going to become peace and joy. We're going to talk about the, 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 the repercussions if we don't respond positively. But this is what happens. There's another thing. Uh, the Bible says here uh, that, we have, that we're going to be learning from God. Learning. Now, now that, that means wisdom. Now, you know, what, you know what wisdom is? Anybody know what wisdom is? Wisdom, according to the Word of God, is being able to see your life from God's perspective. That's real wisdom. Wisdom isn't just knowledge. Wisdom isn't something you learn in school. Wisdom is the ability to see life from God's perspective. And chastisement brings learning into our lives. It, it brings strength. Look in verse 12. Therefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. God says, I want to strengthen you. I, you know, do you know what he's describing here? He's describing someone that is dejected or someone that is depressed. Someone that is, is uh, having a hard time in their life. What's happening? Their, their arms are hanging down. Their head's probably hanging down. They're, they're, they just feel like they just don't have any strength whatsoever. And God says it's time for you to be strengthened. Correction of the Lord brings strength into our life. Correction of the Lord brings healing into our lives. Look in, in verse 13. It says, make straight paths for your feet. That's, that means we're receiving the correction of the Lord, right? We're going his way. We're doing what he says. We're responding to his instruction. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. God says, my correction... If you respond to it, will bring healing into your life. It will heal your broken heart. It will heal your confused mind. It will heal everything about you. It will heal your spirit. It will heal your emotions. It will heal you. Do you hear what I'm saying? But if we don't respond to the correction of the Lord, uh, the lame, we first will become lame and then we'll turn out of the way. And when we get out of the way of the Lord, more correction comes, and all of a sudden we're mad at God when the problem is that we didn't respond to God's correction in the first place. Amen? There's another thing. Uh, he, he says in verse 14, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see God. You know, one of the things that comes out of correction of the Lord is being able to have good relationships. To be able to have peace with all men. You know, if, if, we, if we don't respond to the correction of the Lord, the relationships of our lives are going to be in chaos. It doesn't matter if it's a friend relationship, whether it's a courting relationship, whether it's a married relationship, whatever, whether it's a work relationship with bosses and, and supervisors or co-workers. Uh, if, if we don't in understand and respond to the correction of the Lord, 
we're going to not be at peace with all men, but instead we're going to be contrawise with each one. In verse 14, it says, without which no man can see the Lord. Do you know what correction of the Lord brings? It, it brings the ability to see God and his ways clearly. Brings the ability to see God and his ways clearly. Now, there's some ways that we, we, we can react to the Lord that are not positive. Okay? And, and I want to I give you those ways right quick. He says in verse 5, he says, Have you forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children? My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. We can respond by despising how God is trying to correct our lives. We can, we can respond by despising the instruction of righteousness, by despising the instruction of holiness, by despising the word of God and say it's too restrictive and it ties me down and it keeps me back. That's not true. That's what the devil said to Eve and he's still saying it to people today. I've already told you that once, but I'm telling you again. You see... Uh, we don't need to despise. What is another word for despise? Well, we become angry about it. We become frustrated. Well, I'm just so angry and frustrated about my life. I want to tell you something. If you're angry and frustrated about your life and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, chances are it's because you're not responding to the correction of the Lord. When you get saved, God wants to change things in your life. God wants to change your attitudes. God wants to change your actions. God wants to change your reactions. God wants to change your vocabulary. God wants to change your temperament. God wants to change everything about us. And we can't just say that's the way God made me because God is in the business of making us his way after we come to him. Well, Brother Gary, that's the way I've always been. Yeah, but now you're a Christian. And God wants to instruct you in the right way to go. God wants to instruct you in the right way to relate to one another. Husband, God wants to, to instruct you in the way to treat your wife. Wife, God wants to, to instruct you in the way to respond to your husband. Children, God wants to instruct you in the way to respond to your parents and to grow in faith and knowledge and understanding. Will we respond or will we despise and, 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 and will, we, uh, will we become, what, what does it say there? He says, uh, don't, don't despise it and don't faint when you are rebuked of him. The Bible says that God rebukes us. He does it through his word. He also does it through the Holy Spirit of God in our hearts and in our minds. He speaks to us of correction. He speaks to us of that which is righteous. He, the Bible says that his job is to convict us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. And God, God will give you an attaboy. I want to tell you something. God will tell you that's exactly it. That's what I wanted you to do. That's the way. But God will also say that is not the way. Don't do it like that. Don't respond like that. And as soon as that conviction comes, it's not time to argue with God. It's not time to despise the chastening of God. It's not time to become weary or faint because, oh my goodness, this is just too hard. It's time to respond to God. Amen. You know, uh, he says there, don't faint. It, it means don't become wearied. In verse 3, it says wearied. What did it say? And, and consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Now, wearied means to get tired, doesn't it? It means to have a give up spirit. A give up spirit. Well, I just give up trying to be the man God wants me to be. I just give up trying to be the... The, the woman God wants me. I give up being the young person. No, I want to tell you something. The only thing devil wants you to do is give up trying to do it God's way and just keep on trying to do it your way. That's what the devil wants. Amen? 
And, and he says to faint in your mind. You know what it means to faint in your mind there in the third verse? It means to become depressed. Now, folks, I, I want you to know something. We got a pandemic. That means a, that means a, a widespread epidemic. A pandemic of depression in the United States of America. We have people from, from our children in elementary school all the way through adults who are taking medication every day when they could just respond to the correction of the Lord. You say, oh, there's no mental problems. I, I didn't say that, but I want to tell you something. I think about 99% of the mental problems could be cured by responding to the Holy Spirit of God. I want to guarantee you, if my teacher had told my mother that I was ADHD or bipolar, she would have said, just send him home. He won't be bipolar tomorrow. I'll beat the other polar until he, he straightens out. Responding to correction. He says, don't faint in verse 5. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Listen, God's not through with you yet. But he's going to take you right where you are. And he's going to love you to where he wants you to be. He doesn't correct you because he hates you. He corrects you because he loves you and wants the very best for you. And he said above all else in verse 15... Oh, be very diligent not to fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. One of the worst things that can happen to you in your heart and in your life is for bitterness to get lodged there. And there are people sitting in this auditorium this morning with bitterness lodged in your heart. And I want you to know something. According to the word of God, bitterness is as bad as any cancer you can have. And there's only one remedy for it. And there is a remedy. The remedy is to respond to the correction of the Lord. The remedy is to respond to the instruction of the Lord, the training up of the Lord, the nurturing of the Lord. He says, don't fail of the grace of God. You know what that means? That means God gives you grace to live every day. Grace is the desire and the power to do God's will. God gives you grace in every situation. And he says here, the only way bitterness can be formed in your life is if you will not receive the grace of God that he gives you. By grace, God can set you free from that this very day. Did you know, are you aware that every sin in your life, everything that is wrong between you and God, everything that is wrong in your life is a result of one thing. One thing, resisting the grace of God. If you're a Christian, and I want to tell you something, if you're lost, you're lost because you're resisting the grace of God. Because God has come close and said you're lost. And God has come close and said you can be saved. And God has come close and said how much he loved you that he's given himself for you. But you can resist that grace. You don't have to be saved. There are some maybe sitting in this auditorium who've been taught that the grace of God is irresistible. And yet the word of God says that we can resist the grace of God. And some of us are doing it this morning. Some of us are doing it to our, the, the, the peril of our own soul. Some of us are doing it to the peril of any kind of maturity in our Christian life. Or any kind of peace and harmony in our Christian life. 
because we have we won't respond to the grace of God and we won't respond to the 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 chastisement of the Lord now I I, I don't have time to develop this because I'm out of time but let me tell you this uh, you know when God has a tremendous sense of humor I mean he really understands us and, and when when God was dealing with Egypt did you notice how God did the plagues in Egypt he did the plagues running right along parallel all the gods that the Egyptians had they worshiped the they worshiped the river well he turned it into blood they worshiped frogs he gave them frogs running out their ears I mean, everything that they worshipped, God just said, okay, here, have a bunch of that. And in your life, when the chastisement of God comes, if your problem, if your problem is your beauty or your handsomeness, the chastisement may come in the area of beauty or handsomeness. If your problem is in the area of your, your strength or your ability, God's chastisement may come in the area of your strength or your ability. If your problem is in the area of stinginess and not wanting to give God, want to hold on and want to focus on success instead of focusing on God, God may bring his chastisement in that very area of your life. And all too often we turn around and say, God, I, I'm your child. Why aren't you doing what's right by me? And God's saying, you're my, you're my disrespectful, irreverent, disobedient child. Why don't you respond to my correction? Why don't you respond to my chastening? Why don't you respond to my, my, my instruction in your life? Is the chastening of God a bad thing? No. It is to assure us that we are his children. It is for our good. As he said, it's for our profit. And whenever we look at the chastening, oftentimes it's God taking stuff out and putting stuff in. And if you read over there in, in John the 15th chapter, you find out that when God does the pruning, no, pruning's not pleasant, just like chastisement's not pleasant. But when he does the pruning, he does the pruning so that you can bear more and much fruit in your life. How are you responding to the chastisement of the Lord this morning? You say, well, brother Gary, I don't have any chastisement at all. Better be careful. Because if you're a child of God, God says every, every single one of them, not one, ex not one exclusion, Every single child of God receives chastisement. Why? Because God wants to instruct us in the way that we should go. It's for our good. And if you don't have any chastisement in your life, you better check out your birth certificate. And if you have chastisement in your life, Stop going along with the lies that Satan is whispering in your ear that God's holding out on you or that God's not giving you a fair deal or, or that if you, do it, if you do it your way, you're going to have something better than God's way. It will not happen. Do not resist the grace of God. Do not become bitter toward God. Do not become bitter toward God's truth. Don't give up. Don't faint. Don't become weary. All these responses we can have. God says, I do it for your profit. Are you responding to the grace of God today in your life? If you're here and you've never been saved, you're resisting the grace of God. God wants to save you. If you're here today and you're a child of God, God wants to bring you into his, the image of his son. And he can only do that through correction. There have to be course corrections. There have to be attitude corrections. There have to be desire corrections. There have to be dream corrections. There have to be idea corrections. There have to be belief corrections. In order for us to do it God's way. Father, we ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that 
this morning we will have heard a word from you about chastisement and understand that you are vigorously at work in each of our lives. Lord, help us to respond to you today. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand together and as we sing.